Hey guitar friends, this is Prokopis from String Systems and I want to welcome you to day two of this new edition of SFS Fretboard Secrets. SFS or the String Fragment System allows you to move freely on the guitar fretboard instead of staying stuck in the classic box shapes. It's quick, it's easy and it will get you soloing all over the fretboard in no time. But when you begin to really understand the fretboard instead of mindlessly memorizing it, there's a phenomenon that always comes up. It's something that SFS fans already know as the shift. So let's get right into our lesson and learn about it. The shift occurs whenever you have a guitar tuned with the standard tuning. Standard tuning has a discrepancy. The interval between any two consecutive strings is usually a perfect fourth, which equals five frets. That's why when you play the fifth fret, you get the sound of the next open string. But there's an exception. Between strings 3 and 2, we have a major third interval, which is just 4 frets. Now this has profound implications on how fingering patterns look on the guitar. This discrepancy is partially responsible for the fact that most guitar players memorize shapes without understanding what they are doing. Let me give you a very simple example. Let's take the common chords E minor and A minor in the open position. 99% of guitar players have memorized these two chords at some point without asking any questions. And even if these look different, they are actually the same chord structure. A minor is the same as E minor, just moved one string up. But if I just moved it up without adjustments, I wouldn't get the same type of chord. It sounds cool, but it's not an A minor chord. In order to turn it into an A minor, I need to shift this note here one fret up. That's an example of the shift. Let's now look at an example of how this applies to an A minor pentatonic scale played using SFS in all positions of the fretboard. First, I need to locate all my A's. To use SFS, you need to know where your root notes are. But knowing the notes on the fretboard is a must for many other reasons as well. So at some point, you have to learn them anyway. In case you need help with that, you can get my free fretboard memorization toolbox by clicking the link below. Now I'll go to every A and play this simple string fragment system made of three string fragments. But look at what happens when I play it on string four. Why? Because of the tuning discrepancy. How do I fix it? The shift. As soon as I cross from the G string into the B string, I shift up one fret. And if I had anything above that on string one, it would remain shifted as well because the top two strings have a normal perfect fourth interval between them. And that's why the same SFS based on string three looks like this. So now that you understand this, let me play you all positions. So here's the rule of the shift. Whenever using a movable system like SFS or a movable chord or any movable structure on the guitar, the notes on the top two strings need to be shifted one fret up compared to the lower four strings. This is not as hard as it seems. Those of you that have practiced a bit of SFS know that this ability to shift becomes automatic after a bit of practice. And now that we're aware of how this works, we can realize that all positions of any scale on the fretboard is actually made of the same movable series of string fragments. They just look different because of the shift. But if you see through that, you never have to memorize box shapes again. Instead, you learn five simple string fragments and that's it. For the sake of time, I demonstrated with just three string fragments, which gives you a part of each position. But if you learn all five string fragments and practice them systematically, 
you can really master the fretboard. It does take practice. This is not some magic pill that downloads the scales into your head, but it's much faster to learn than box shapes. And more importantly, it's fun and it's musical. Instead of feeling that you're just memorizing mindless information, you actually feel like you're in control of your soloing because your ears relate everything to the root note. And you have the freedom to take advantage of all areas of the neck right from the start. If you want to learn more and discover what else is possible with SFS, make sure to sign up for this series. It's completely free. If you already signed up and you're watching this inside the course, then you'll find a guided interactive just play practice track below this video. The practice track will take you through improvising with what we just learned in all positions. You can also get the free SFS Fretboard Secrets course package and binge watch the entire seven day series if you want or review later or check out the extras. When you get the package, there's also an option to put a donation there, which would be much appreciated. So until I see you again in the next lesson, please use the comments below to let me know what you think about SFS. If the previous version of this course is any indication, I expect to hear a lot of excited responses from people who are fed up with memorizing box shapes. I would also be very happy to hear from my screen partners and those of you that do have experience with my SFS courses. Go ahead and speak out and encourage others who are new here. I'd love to hear from you and I'll do my best to answer any questions. This is Prokopis from String Systems. Thank you for watching and remember to enjoy your practice and be effective.